Hi, I'm Marshall Teague. I am really glad you're here today. We're going to be doing the MacGyver podcast with Matt Jackson. So I'm really glad you're here. Let's rock. Let's let it happen. <laughs> Listen to that. <laughs> that's my, yeah, my wife in the background cheering. Yeah. Thank God for her. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. <laughs> Hi, I'm Richard Dean Anderson. My name's MacGyver. Colonel Jack O'Neill, SG-1. My name is Pratt, Ernest Pratt. I always get a happy, tingly feeling when I see those guys. Name one contract that I failed to execute. MacGyver. Oh, here we go. You're a target. And I don't intend to miss. Over my rotting corpse. Sorry, did I say that out loud? Glowing eyes, cliche behavior, evilness, that kind of thing. Is mental illness contagious? You think? You can do anything you want to do if you put your mind... Well, you do have a penchant for pulling brilliant ideas out of your butt. Head. Out of your head, when we need them. Oh, the stuff's already here, I just find a different way to use it. I like your attitude. Permission to take a team through the Stargate, sir. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the latest episode of the MacGyver Podcast. I'm your host, Mac Jackson. Uh, today, a lot of fun. We have legendary uh, character actor who you, you would know from, well, everything. Uh, Marshall R. Teague. Uh, he's been on MacGyver twice. I'm sure you know which ones. He's also been in the episode of Stargate SG-1, A Matter of Time. Uh, a lot of people who don't even know those things know him from, um, well, you know. I mentioned he was on Columbo and and Quantum Leap early on. Uh, he's been in, well, Roadhouse is the big one that I, everybody knows. Um but he's been in everything, and he deserves it. He's a heck of an actor, very intense, but more importantly, a wonderful, sweetheart, sincere human being. So <clears throat> we get into all of that. Um, martial arts, acting, music. It goes on. It's a lot of fun. Uh, first little um, cleanup, I guess, or I don't know what you call it. Just tell you what's new. Richard Dean Anderson is going to be close to me, but not enough that I can actually make it. He's going to be at Steel City Comic Con March 31st. Uh, get your tickets. Just type in Steel City Comic Con. Uh, a lot of friends from the show, um, this show, uh, and followers on Twitter and Facebook of the MacGyver podcast have mentioned, hey, you going? I wish I could. I can't. Um, it's too far. You know, it's a matter of money. Uh, believe you me, any chance to actually see Brick in person, I'm all for. That being said, if anybody would like to nudge, nudge, wink, wink, mention to him that he still owes us a chat on the Zoom for this podcast, I'd appreciate it. Uh, as many of you know, he said he would, but now it's a matter of tracking him down. And I don't want to be a pest, but I still got to give the grease to the squeaky wheel. So if anybody wants to take a moment and mention it to remind him, because I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Um, he kind of just moment to moment does what he wants. Uh, so hopefully the reminder will be a good moment and we'll finally get to talk to him. Uh, but everybody enjoy that. Please know I wish I was there. Uh, I love you all for mentioning me uh, and asking if I'd be there because the other great thing is I get to actually see a lot of you in person instead of just typing online. Uh, I love your interaction with the MacGyver podcast, whether it's through the Facebook page, the group page on Facebook. We now have a Discord, which I didn't know about. Um, sometimes co-host Nate created one for us. Uh, I didn't know what that was, but basically it's a it's a like a chat room if you want to do that. We've created one. If you go to the Forever Adventure Network, there'll be a Discord under either the audio series 
the podcast. It's there. Join us, won't you? It's nice. You can go on tangents. Nobody's going to bust your chops. Also, thank you to the people who are keeping an eagle eye on the group page on Facebook. I'm finding a lot of people are, we get a lot of new members who aren't really members who want to come on and post random garbage that have nothing to do with Richard Dean Anderson. Uh, So here's a warning. If you're listening to this and you're one of them, the moment I see it, you're blocked. You're not even just kicked out. You're blocked. I'm not dealing with this. Some people give people chances. I know what you're doing. Let's, you know. But the rest of you who are interacting, thank you. Uh, I love it. I love seeing your excitement. I love your appreciation of the things that I post. Um, I also love, and I would mention you by name, except I don't always know if you want that. We have a, a Patreon that helps keep the lights on. I just, I, I know it's a little bright at the moment. That's the window. Um, I had to buy a new camera for this, and it's on top of the, that's how you're able to see me if you're watching this instead of listening. Um, I had to buy it, and, and through the wonderful donations of the people who throw a buck or here, here and there um, on our Patreon, at the Forever Adventure Network, you can also type in Mac Jackson. That'll help get you there. Uh, thank you. It, honest to God, it means the world to me. And helps keep the lights on. I, I was able to buy a, a decent camera. Not too expensive, but at least a better quality that gives me this light here that you can see. Um, so thank you. Please keep it coming. Spread the word. Because the more that I make through this, uh, I can basically funnel it back. I want to be able to give away stuff to you fine folks. I, I can think of names off the top of my head who contribute daily to our posts and Twitter and all that great stuff that I want to be able to go. Thank you here. I did a little bit of that during Christmas with stickers and pins to a few people. Um, so thank you. If you donate, I, I will try to get you stuff whether it's shirts or pins or behind the scenes, whatever. I just love, I think that's one of the reasons I'm not rich. Uh, If I had money, I think I'd be spending it on other people. Not a bad curse to have, but yeah. Uh, So thank you for that. Now, I think we've touched on everything. Uh, I'm going to start writing the next episode of the Stargate, sorry, MacGyver SG-1 audio series. Um, if it were up to me, I'd do it as my full day job. That way you guys wouldn't have to wait. I could just keep funneling them out. We also have a wonderful new artist who contributes a lot, uh, Warlock Weirdo TV. If you go on our pages, you'll see a lot of the posts are me showing off his artwork. Um, he's, he has a lot more planned coming up. He wants to do like a, uh, like a fun comic strip kind of a thing where it's four panels. I've done it a little bit. I did a scene from the audio series that I thought would work as a little tease. But it's time consuming, as you know, to do this, to do the other podcast, to write, produce, perform the audio series. It's a lot of work. And I was doing the original artwork for the audio series. I would love it to come from you guys. Any of you artists, Marley Ward is a great one, for example. She's got a a Stargate series that she does a comic strip for where it's kind of given us the uh, scenes that we wish we got to see between Jack and Sam. Um, Check her stuff out, Marley Ward. But if anybody wants to contribute art-wise to this podcast or the audio series, I'll gladly share it. I'll gladly promote it. Um, the artist I talked about, uh, Warlock Weirdo TV, also has a lot of his stuff up at our store. So if you want to get, we, I, he's always adding stuff um, to to this show. So <clears throat> check it out. Go to our shops. There's a T Public. If you just go to the Forever Adventure Network and go under shops. There's T Public. There is Redbubble. That's where you can get the new designs. 
Also co-host Nate has his commission credentials. He's adding new stuff to all the time. So just go Forever Adventure Network. Really, that'll give you everything. I mean, it'll give you anything connected to this podcast. It'll give you anything connected to MacGyver, anything to the audio series, the shops, um, the Patreon. Just check it out and be a mensch and share it with other people. Because, again, word of mouth helps. I just want to provide good stuff for you guys. And you're all part of that team. And it's recognized and it's appreciated. So let's go to our fun chat with Marshall Artigue. Enjoy, everybody. <laughs> um, so how was your trip? Trip was good. Trip you was really good. Hawaii? Yeah, went over there, uh, you know, with dear, dear friend. My wife and I, of course, we enjoyed the weather and the rain, uh, but it was beautiful. I just got to tell you, it was really, really beautiful, and it's uh, good for the soul. Oh, I know. Yeah. You know, I got to tell you, sitting up there and just letting the breeze come and watching, listening to the waves, uh, it's just, you know, it's just beautiful. It really just, it resets your clock, I, I think. It's oh, that's, that, an, you know? that's an I, understanding here, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just, just to get away from everything and just... Let the sound and the peace just wash over you is. Well, you know, interesting you say it that way because we go over there and we're not ready for that. You know, I don't know how, to, you know, we go over in our world and we go to that and we're not ready for that. And all of a sudden you're just hit with, wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Can you smell that? It's beautiful. Can you hear that? It's wonderful. What can you not hear? Cars, horns. People yelling, walking. You don't hear any of that. All you hear is is birds and chickens. And typically, I mean, you're getting people in their best attitude there too. Because, oh yeah. You know, they're either they either live there and it's very kumbaya, or they're on vacation and they're so thankful sure. for the break that you know if you do cross paths with somebody, you're like, okay, hi, welcome. You know. Or they welcome you equally as much. You know. Yeah. You know, people, uh, you know, mahala is the word that people, you know, thank you, you know, and you hear that all the time. Yeah. And, it's, and they always say it with a smile, mahalo, you know, so you kind of walk out of there going, wow, that's, you don't hear that in the States. Well, there's so many um, actors I know that after they work in Hawaii, they tend to retire there. Well, Pierce, you know? Brosnan, Pierce Brosnan is one of them. Chuck Norris is another one, you know, they, they have a place there and, you know, and, and uh, several others, I think, uh, well, like the list is long and distinguished, and first I don't want to go I, into that because they, they want to keep that private. So well, I, the, the first one I knew about was um, uh, Hawaii Five O. Oh, sure. Right? I mean, you film there. You go, I'm not leaving. Why would I leave? <laughs> yeah, well, no. he. That was his – when he did Hawaii Five O, uh, the original. You're talking about the original. Yeah, yeah. No, he never was going to leave. Oh. You know, he stayed there, kept his tan. His hair was always perfect, you know. Uh and this that was it i mean why go back to the states when everything you know you you know everybody here mm -hmm. everything you want is here right why would i want to go back to traffic jams well the food alone would be my reason for going i i watch you know any show where they show what they're making there and i'm like oh it it kills me because i can i can imagine what it tastes like but i've never you're, you're, had... you, you watch guy fieri don't you I, my family does. I watch um, um, uh, somebody feed Phil. Somebody feed uh -huh. Phil with Phil Rosenthal. It's on Netflix. Uh -huh. But I'll tell you anything. Like we're foodies in this house, so oh, yeah. you know, it, 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 you see some of these foods that you go, I, you know, you kind of get locked into knowing what every food is that you're going to eat. You're either going to have chicken or beef or anything. And if you catch something. That's new. What you know? You know you figure those days are over. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. I mean the but you know watch over there and they'll say what are you having? Oh we're having whole fish and here it is and you're sitting there going okay well, well who, who gets this? He said no that's yours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're eating that and you go now I'm eating all that. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, just, because all the bones in it, that's that's the hard part. You got to pick through all the. Yeah, you get get the bones out, and they want the bones back because they make stock out of it. So, uh -huh. you know, it's kind of cool. That is cool. Well, and, and the pig roasts, you know, I I've been oh, to one. Oh, 
gosh. Oh, man. Where it falls off the bone. Oh, my goodness gracious. You know, I, that is one of my, you know, I, I love barbecue and I'm, I'm big on the state's barbecue, you know, pulled pork, all that. But when you go over there and you get, you know, that Kahlua pig, oh, mm. people, people think, well, no, it's pork. No, it's not. Oh, no, it's, no. no, 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 it's not. <laughs> It's 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 that it's that kind of special volcanic wonderful flavor, and there is no flavor like it. Right, right. You know, it just isn't. I, they, I know they're big on um, shrimp dishes too. Oh, big one. Right, yeah. I, and, and you know, you go, yeah, all right, I know shrimp, but no, there's something special about how they do it. Well, you, you can walk along the beach, and there's a there's a truck, you know, and it's got this line of people with surfboards or something and they're all standing there and they're all eating and then you go up with what's 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 great today oh get the shrimp tacos dude you know they're they're bitching today he's got a little mango in there the shrimp and all of a sudden you're going oh, excuse me oh, yeah. i gotta have that so yeah. next thing you know you're face deep in a <laughs> taco you know <laughs> um it was funny too because i saw you posting pictures and i'm like that chuck norris oh, that's yeah. cool and so like you guys stayed in touch through the years, or he's probably my best friend. I love that. Yeah, yeah. we've known each, we've known each other. I've had I can tell people I've had two very best friends. You know, in this business, uh, one of them is no longer with us. You know, it was Patrick Patrick Swayze. Obviously, I figured you were going to say that he's another yeah. guy. Yeah, I just you know, miss the guy every day of my life. And then the other one is Chuck Norris, mm -hmm. and he's like my brother. And you know, we're 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 Uncle Marshall and Aunt Lindy to his kids, you know, and that's, he and I go back, we, we tried to figure out how long we had known each other. We finally just knocked it off at four decades. Mm -hmm. We just said, I don't know. It's, I know it goes further than that. So let's just say four plus decades. So I, I think the first movie you guys were in was 84. I'm thinking that sounds about right. Something like that. Yeah. I would have yeah. To, yeah. Well, it's something you'll appreciate this because. But we used to spar. You got to say even before the movie business, you know, mm -hmm. we were sparring and working martial arts and, you know, and uh, sparring with each other and fighting. So that was before this. And uh, so it goes back a long way. Well, I'm a, I'm a martial artist, too. And yeah. one of the things that always I always loved. I mean, he's kind of him and Bruce Lee are the guys that when you're born, you know who Chuck Norris is. You know who Bruce Lee is as far as fighting. Those They're living legends. Guys. Well, right. one of them is one, one, right. one of them is a living legend. Well, you know, legend. And the thing is, what I always loved about him was his kindness and humility in a world. And you know this too. Uh, when you're in the martial arts world, you got a lot of um, chest bumpers. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like that the yeah. guys who have to be the alpha male and and they they're eyeing you up the moment they see you. And you know, I'm 48 now. I was never into that sort of mentality, but now I go into a dojo and I'm just like, I don't have time for this. I'm not doing this with you, sport. You want to be the tough guy? Go ahead, be the tough guy. Yeah. But Chuck was never never that guy he was always a, yeah. a kind guy he knew his stuff so he didn't have to prove himself yeah you know and just I, like, I, what you see is what you get right you know i i've been i've been hit so hard that my hair hurt mm -hmm. you know and I, I didn't go down you know but i was out i was out on my feet but i didn't i didn't go down mm -hmm. I, that's happened twice uh once with superfoot wallace sure and the other one with with chuck and chuck you know comes over Marshall, you okay? Yeah. I said, you want to continue to fight? I said, I'll tell you what, when I see just one of you, <laughs> when, they, when they go back together, yeah, we'll go on and fight. What but, did he hit you with? What did he hit me with? Yeah. The left hook. Oh, okay. Uh, you thought it was going to be a foot or um, something like that. Well, the, the th that's the thing which, about him. That I always do. Tell yeah. Well, you're just what you were going to say. He, the thing that makes him so different is some guys are, are feet guys, some guys are fist guys. He was equally both. He's both. Yeah. He's both. Uh, Superfoot Wallace, you know, he caught me with a with his foot, you know, obviously. Yeah. You know, he had a little hook kick and he caught me right in the temple. Same thing. I didn't go down, but I was out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and but it but the thing about Chuck was, you know, he would mix it up. He would come at you with 
everything but the kitchen sink and it was always precise. Mm -hmm. You know, I saw, I've seen him do this hundreds of times on, on, you know, with me and other people that he sparred with and then watching old films of him fighting. Mm -hmm. He was just a, it was like a buzzsaw, mm -hmm. but everything was accurate. He okay. knew when, he knew when to throw it, mm -hmm. you know, and he could sucker you in. He was good about that. He would, you know, faint and get you to come <laughs> at him. <and> <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. Knock you out, you know. But uh, as far as the personality, uh, he and his wife, we loved them to pieces. I mean, Gina and the kids, I, you know, my wife and I kind of look at them as our kids also. Because mm -hmm. we've been with them when I held them in my hand. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how, you know, we go back. And uh, that's how we feel about them, you mm -hmm. know. And they, and they give back that love and respect and... It's just something that's ongoing, you know, and I, I you can't buy that, you know, right. you can't buy that. You can't get it. It just is there or it's not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's I think that's the stronger legacy more than any sort of film work. You know, like, like I've met, you know, a lot of people in the business and if they're a-holes, well, <laughs> you know, that's what you remember. But if they're good people, you just go more. Give me, you know. Yeah. It's, it's an addiction. I want more yes, of that. Yes. You're absolutely correct. And right. uh, he is an addiction. Yeah. Yeah. You know, his whole family. I mean, first thing we do, we see each other. It's always hugs. You know, it's always hugs. How you doing? Kiss on the cheek. How, you know, what's up? The kids come over, that kind of say, oh, Uncle Marshall, Aunt Lindy, that kind of thing. And it just warms your heart. Mm -hmm. It really warms your heart. And uh, I, I, I feel blessed. Mm -hmm. To have shared that, you know, with two people in this business, you know, I mean, I've got other people that I know that I love dearly, but two people in this business, that's very hard. That's very hard to do. Mm -hmm. But to be able to say I've had two people like that in my life and I would not trade that friendship and that caring for all the money in the world. Right. Right. I wouldn't I wouldn't trade it for all the money in the world. Which is then a reflection on you because you got your priorities straight. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I like to think that. Thank yeah. you. I like to think You're that. welcome. <laughs> um, so I was looking over your bio, and it's so funny because a lot of it I already knew. And I want to tell you, and I'm sure you've been told this before, but and I could talk about, for starters, well, you were on so many shows that are iconic. Beside, I mean, MacGyver and Stargate. But Quantum Leap, you were on one of the earliest yeah. episodes of that. Yeah. Columbo, I mean, come on. And and great, great guy, I gotta tell you. Peter Falk. Peter Falk, wonderful, wonderful human. Yeah. Funny. Funny. Yeah. Oh, the, some of the driest wit you are. I was gonna he say it's very self-deprecating. I'm, I'm gonna slap. And he walks over and he says, This is, you know, I gotta tell you, this is some of the best you've ever looked. <laughs> you know, like that. <laughs> He just he just does that, and it's just that's just one of many over the years. So yeah, I've been blessed. I talked to uh, Paul Reiser. I got to meet him, and and mm -hmm. his idol was Peter Falk. Uh, first saw him in Robin and the Seven Hoods, and was hooked ever since. Well, he wrote a movie for the both of them called The Thing About My Parents. So he got to act with Peter Falk. Wow. And so you know when I when I finally got to meet Paul in person, that's what we talked about. We talked about what a sweetheart Peter Falk was. Yeah. And, and even up to the end when when he tells a story about going to see him and, you know, and he he had dementia at, towards the yes. end. Yes, and he he's talking to him, Paul's talking to him, and he doesn't know if he's really like paying attention. And his, his, I guess it was his wife or his daughter came over and gave them cookies or whatever. And he was sitting there and they're talking. He's not eating the cookie. And... He goes here. I'll I'll, I'll help. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll get rid of the cookie for you. And he grabs his wrist and goes, "Don't you touch my effing cookie!" <laughs> <laughs> goes, oh, so you are still in there, okay? You know, he's there. He's yeah. there. No problem. But uh, um, it, it's something too because one of the things I noticed about you that I've been dying to tell you to, to in person is your delivery. When you want to be intimidating, you nail it. Like uh, I just 
obviously I knew it by heart already, but the Renegade episode of MacGyver, you're, you're the whole thing, you know, the, the character has the pain in his head. Mm. You have to take the time to actually feel that you're so convincing that I, I just point out to my wife, cause we, I just happened to watch it again. Cause I knew we were talking and I said, look, look at how he's doing this because a lot of guys go, Oh, oh, and then move on. You, each time the pain hits, you let it slowly subside. Like you're not rushing the moment. I know that sounds like a, a thing people take for granted, but I'm watching it. I'm like, no, you're not trying to get to the next thing where you have to say a line. You're letting that fade. It's the it's the character you're playing. Yeah. Don't lie to the camera. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, you can't lie to a camera. I'll give you the, one of the most important lessons I ever learned in my life. She was 83 years old. Her name was Lillian Sidney. She was the head of talent for MGM when I started working with her. She was 83. And she, matter of fact, she had called me over and she said, you will be at my house tomorrow at four o'clock. I didn't even know her. Oh, she, and she looked at me with this thick glasses and her finger up like this and she held it up to my face and she said and she honestly she looked at me and says you are a lump of coal you're a lump of coal he says you will never be a diamond but you will be a semi-precious stone I will teach you how to become that stone wow and then the lesson she taught me is, is that a camera is a truth machine. You cannot be playing the part of a dog and think cat because meow comes across instead of bow wow. Sure. You just lied to the camera. Don't lie to the camera. Huh. Now, when, when was this? Was this very early on? 70s. Okay. Late 70s. Yeah, 70, I think 70, 77 or 78. Yeah. So when I was when working with starting. Right? Yeah, and she, like I said, she gave Clark Gable his screen test. Does that give you an idea of how far she went back? Yeah. You know, wow. and I, I found her to be probably, she's the one who got me started in Shakespeare. Oh, jeez. You know, she started said, we're not going to go work on lines for a TV show. You're going to learn the classics. <laughs> so we sat down and read to each other, and she would tell me, what are you feeling from this? Why are you feeling it? Mm -hmm. And what do you want from it? Mm -hmm. So that lady, you know, years, a couple of years later, I went to England. I understudied. Of course, I was a Yank. I couldn't get, you know, I couldn't get a, a work permit. I slept in a, I, I paid, you know, I had money I'd saved when I was a cop. And I paid for my room, I, which was basically a basement mm -hmm. in a place. And I studied at the Royal Shakespeare Academy doing understudy and painting sets and understudy. They would, they would just say, study this character, understudy this. And out of all that, it was a, year, a little over a year. I actually got on stage one time. Well, two, the night performance. And it's because the guy playing the prologue from Henry V was so drunk he couldn't get his cape on. He almost hung himself. Sure. <laughs> the, stage, the stage master kicked him out. He said, hey, piss off, go get sober. And then, he, he threw it to me. He says, put it on, Yank. You're going on. So I put it on and I did it. And then I did a you know matinee the next day. And my payoff was going down the road. There's a little bar down there. I think it was called the Lame Duck or something like that. And uh, the lady called Maeve ran it. And I went in and I knew the actors that were there. That, I mean, they're all well-studied Shakespearean actors. And I wasn't a Shakespearean actor. I was a Yank. But I was going to sit. I knew they wouldn't ask me to sit down. So I was going to a stool. It was in the corner. I was going to get a pint. And I walked by the table and this young gentleman reached up and grabbed my arm. And I looked down at him, you know, because I was a lot bigger than he was. And I looked down at him and I, and I said, can I help you? He says, and he looked up and he said, not bad, Yank. Not bad. That was my payoff. Yeah. I, I took that as the best payoff I could get, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to say I did it twice. And then, of course, that was it. And I came back to the States and 
worked at trying to get a job, just like every other actor. Well, how did you go from um, be, being a, a deputy sheriff? Is that what it was? Yeah. Deputy mm -hmm. sheriff and deciding, you know what, I think I'm going to go be an actor. How did that happen? Well, I was going undercover, and uh, I, came, I came up with a bright idea of um, how do I do this and not get my butt shot off. Um, and uh, I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to study acting. You know, I'm going to study acting. You know, of course, that went over not at all. Yeah. But I, but I did it anyway. And, you know, I worked and tried and I got a performance where I was doing, I was playing puck. I was 220 pounds. I lifted weights five days a week and I was wearing green tights and a reef. Yeah. And they were doing it theater in the round in a park. And I figured I can do this because nobody will see me. Sure. You know, especially no cops would see me. Mm -hmm. Well, that one night that I was doing this, they were a car. One of the police of uh, sheriff's cars was making a pass through the park. And they saw the lights and they figured, we'll go down and take a look at this. And my partner, one of my, one of my partners, a guy I, I rode with, had taken the place of another guy whose wife was... Uh, having a baby so he took the shift no problem they walked down and you could hear the you know the handcuffs clank and the, the everything that you could hear that there's a clank that cops know that other people don't know mm -hmm. and I, I knew they were coming and then i came bouncing on the stage at 220 pounds you know and uh, i played the part with the southern dialect obviously it really sucked and you could hear this voice back there he said Hell, I told you, son of a bitch was crazy. And he turned around. He said, you ought to ride with him. <laughs> you know? oh. So for weeks after that, I would end up with wreaths and butterfly wings and leaves on my desk and in my car. Sure. And uh, when I, you know, went under, I was under for about a year or so on certain things I was doing and and made up my mind, you know, yeah, I mean, it, it worked. Mm -hmm. You know, it worked. And when I got through, I said, I've got to know what this is what is it that's having an effect here that i have never let anything have an effect on mm -hmm. you know uh they give you an example i got got the job you know the undercover i asked the sheriff why did i get this assignment he said because you have no personality he said second you don't have a sense of humor and third you're a very good tracker now Coming out of the service and going right into this, I took it as a compliment. The track is he, he was busting my hump. I mean, he was busting my hump and telling me, you don't have anything it takes to be an actor. So when I told him I was going, he said, God help him. Good luck. <laughs> well, I guess you showed him, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Like, like I, I don't know which I saw first, which premiered first, the Quantum Leap or MacGyver, but I remember, because you're on MacGyver twice, yes. and, but the first time, you know, I think it was the first time I saw you, and I was impressed because you brought that intensity without, basically, he's a sympathetic bad guy. I mean, it's, you know, the guy's got brain issues, he's hurting, and so he's doing stuff out of necessity, trying to get help and even though he's not going about it the right way you go man he, the guy you could feel the pain and the intensity that you brought to it like there's one line in particular that i i pointed out today that when they wrote it i'm surprised they didn't change it because the wife's name is marie mm -hmm. and you have to say something like listen marie there's nothing wrong with me mm -hmm. now that rhymes you know, if you don't deliver that right, your mind subconsciously goes, That sucked. Right? Like, Marie and, and me? Really? And nobody, me. nobody noticed this? You know? But, yeah. again, I, I, I knew it was coming. So I said to my family, my kids were there, and my wife was there. I said, listen to this. Listen to how he delivers this, and he makes it work. And you and you nail it, and you can feel that, that intensity. They go, see? And they go, what? I said, exactly. I paused it. I said, do you hear how it rhymed? They went, oh, yeah, I guess it does. But it doesn't. 
it does, but it doesn't. Right. Right. Because your inflection is in the right moments where it overcomes any sort of obstacle like that. Right. Like he means it. Like when you say that line, it's stop busting my chops. I'm right. fine. Like it's that sort of, you know, stop giving me a hard time kind of a thing. Yeah. And it it sings beautifully. Thank you. You're welcome. You. And I'm telling like anytime I see you in anything, I'm like, ooh. Because basically, you know, there's certain guys that if they're in a, in a thing, I'm watching it. Yeah. And you're one of them. Because I go, okay, this is going to be good. No matter how big his part is, I know I'm going to feel that intimidation in, of course, depending on what you're playing. But, you know, a lot of times if you're playing the tough guy, I believe it. Like, it's that, you know. Thank you. You're very welcome. Well, you know, if a lot of the intenseness came naturally mm -hmm. because you don't do what I did for a living and and go around being Mr. Smile, smiley face all the time. But being able to overcome that part of, of me that was the old Marshall Teague and been able to reach back into it and bring it out is important. It's a tool. Mm -hmm. It's a tool. But you have to go there. You, you know, a lot of things that I said, you have to go there back in your head to that time in your head to bring that out. And sometimes going back in there is not the nicest place you want to go. Sure. But you go there anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, that's just to be able to hear you say that, that you got it means something. And I appreciate it. You're very welcome. I, yeah, like I said, I, I was so happy to see you on social networking because I thought, no, this it, this guy sticks with me. I, I If I get a chance to talk with him, I, I need you to- I'm glad it worked out, man. I'm You're glad right. it worked out. That's cool. <laughs> um, well, you know, and it's funny too because I knew it was just a matter of, I, I never want to be pushy with anybody. I'm like, when is best for you? And you're you're blessed, you're cursed with the blessing of being busy. Like, you know, you're not sitting around waiting for someone to bug you. You're you got stuff going on. Yeah. And and I'm happy to work around that because cool. that means I get to see more of your stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, I mean, it shows in Quantum Leap. Uh, on that, which was a very early episode. That was a first season episode of Quantum. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I mean, everybody was getting their feet on the ground that season. Yeah, and that was one of those episodes where you go, okay, they're 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 settling into what it's supposed to be—the rhythms and the, you know, the scenes. I don't even think his leap was the blue light yet. I think it just—it was still. No, just, I think it just kind of a spiral thing. Wasn't yeah, it? from the sky, I think. Yeah, came down okay. and there he was holding the pig. But yeah, I remember. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> uh and i re i remember piggy that Sue. yeah piggy sue <laughs> the what do they call it the the kiss with history yeah. i saw you were on the uh quantum leap podcast with with uh abby uh yeah like, last year or so that's one of the ones i listened to and i i do i do voice acting work and i was actually on in his uh audio series um for quantum leap I got to play coincidentally a cop. Cool. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> that is so cool, man. I, I had to be the cop that was about to bang down the door, you know, and cool. do all of that. Come out with your hands up type of stuff. But it got the ball rolling because now I do, I write and produce, if you could see it. Yeah, uh, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. MacGyver SG1 audio series. So that way I get to do adventures of both shows, but together because I have basically... RDA, you know, MacGyver and Jack find out they're Well, brothers. I mean, Ricky, Ricky Dean, God, what a great guy. Yeah. We had more fun. You know, like I said, I got to do a Stargate too. I know this is uh, the MacGyver. No, no, it's all part of it. But, uh, you know, when we got to that one, he said, I got to put up with you again. <laughs> and, you're a, and you're another military guy coming at me. Jesus, Marshall, come on. I said, yeah, you're, you're, you're going to like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, you that's another great example of the intensity that you bring forth 
without it being over the top. Because a lot of guys will play, well, I'm a military guy, so I have to, you know, no offense to, um, uh, of course, I can't think of his name now, right now, the original Jack O'Neill in the movie, or Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell. Kurt, Kurt Russell playing Jack O'Neill in the movie. I'm not blaming him. I'm blaming what they gave him. That's was, what they gave him. Exactly. Straightforward. You're the cliche military guy. You yeah. got the buzz cut. You only say what you need to say, and that's it. You know, and and Rick, I'm sure you know, but Rick comes along and goes, I'm not doing that. You know, if I'm going to be Jack O'Neill, I need to bring more to this character than... than... I'm going to flow. Yeah. I mean, Rick, Rick, Ricky Dean was going, I'm going to flow with this, because this guy is, like, cool. Yeah. And I am not doing that. <laughs> and, and so irreverent, too, which is... Oh, great. absolutely. You know, the, the fact that he would ad-lib and you never knew when it was coming. I, I would get stories from the other guys on the show, you know, Michael Shanks and anybody. And they'd say, we didn't know what he was going to say. As a matter yeah. of fact, if anything, if you watch our faces when he comes off with some of these lines, everything stops because they go. Uh, what do you say? Right. <laughs> and, and, but, you know, and. It stayed, they have to try and stay in character where many times they just end up laughing. Well, he did, he did it to me. I mean, when we're doing, we're doing other thing. He's, he's doing it to me all the way through this. So I just kept coming back at him. Like, especially when you're hanging 25 feet in the air, mm -hmm. you know, we were up there for about an hour, by the way. Sure. And I figured this, now I realize that this is where he had made up his mind. He was going to get me back because we're hanging up there. And he said, hey, you want to play, uh, you want to go uh, play hockey tonight? And it's funny, I just sent a note to a girl in, uh, named Peggy, not Peggy Sue, but Peggy, <laughs> in Germany. And she asked, was there a funny moment? And I said, yeah, you're hanging 25 feet in the air with R Ricky Dean Anderson. You're about to drop, he's about to drop your butt in a black hole. You're upside down looking up at him. He's going, do you want to play, do you want to play hockey tonight? Of course, like a team player, I first thing I said, well, I, of course I want to play hockey with you tonight. I said, however, there is an issue. What's that? I don't know how to skate and I don't know how to play hockey. He goes, ah, don't worry about it. <laughs> we'll teach you as you go. I don't think anybody really scored too many points that night because everybody spent the evening laughing. Yeah. At me trying to come at them <laughs> like this. <laughs> When I ask him, I ask him, what do I do, guys? I'm barely standing on the ice, and I got all this gear on that I have no idea what I'm doing with. He said, you keep that guy from getting that puck in that goal. <laughs> and I'm looking at these guys skating backwards and doing twirls and all this other stuff, and I said, what are the rules? He said, in your case, there are no rules. I said, thank you. I'm sure That's Dan all Shea I needed to know. I, I guarantee Dan Shea was there, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was oh, just yeah. I was just talking to him and and <clears throat> him, Mike Greenberg and Rick, you know, well, they were all there. Almost every day they were they're, all they're, there. They're texting each other while they're watching like today. If there's a hockey game on, they're going to be texting each other. You know, so when you mentioned that I'm like, "Oh, I could picture that line up, but guys." Oh, it was I mean, when I stepped on, they're waiting on the ice. They're all doing their little swirling and back forth and this kind of stuff and here i walk to the edge of the ice and i'm in this thing it looks like the pillsbury doughboy yeah yeah and they say come on out marsh we're about to start and i put one i didn't have a clue what i was doing not a clue and they just from the second i got on the ice it started oh he's ready man he's all for it <laughs> well not to mention i mean being in that brace for however long that's got to hurt after a while it, it, yeah i mean you know, it starts to dig in, I would think. It, it has its moments, but you luckily you're sitting up or talking about different things. <laughs> Ricky Dean's talking about this one or something he's got to do. And I bought this car and, you know, we're just hanging around. I mean, literally hanging around <laughs> doing this. And it just turned out to be, you know, a great episode. But every episode I've ever done with him, you know, we've <clears throat> we've had a ball. Yeah, yeah. I mean, got to go to the Old West with me, I mean. MacGyver's women. That's, that's absolutely. And it's so funny too, because I see you in that. And I remember when it originally aired, I went, 
because you know because basically it's supposed to be a dream so he's pulling people from pre previous episodes you know in his life kind of a thing sure. and i'm watching you and i'm like oh from renegade marshall okay because again you're playing a different character and it's not you're not the guy with the you know the the ptsd and the wound and yeah. everything you're you're a you're a cowboy and and you're a not taking any crap kind of cowboy no he's an outlaw he's definitely yeah an outlaw. yeah and very comfortable being an outlaw and you go oh wow big difference in characters there yeah. you know it showed let me do um <clears throat> let me do the 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 switch thing because like i said do I have to do anything? You don't have to. All you have to do is click on the link that I'm going to send you again. Because basically, what happens is during the pandemic, uh, Zoom became a thing, and it was so successful. They went, well, now we'd like you to pay over, a, you know, almost two hundred dollars a year to be a member. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. Exactly. Yeah, I'm doing a podcast for free. <laughs> but, yeah. like, you know, I I hope people like donate to a Patreon. But in the meantime, there's no way I'm paying two hundred bucks. So no, you go do it. Yeah. I'll figure out how to click and get back on and we'll just figure it out. Sweet. It'll be two seconds. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> and okay. I'm not the brightest light bulb in the house when it comes to computers, but it's okay. I'm back. You do so much better than most because a lot of times I schedule one of these and the person forgot and went to Alaska or wherever, or they go, yeah, I'm all for it. How do you work a computer? I'm like, oh God. You know, you know, you just said the most beautiful words to me that I think I've ever heard. All right. And that is, I don't know how to use a computer. I am an absolute Neanderthal. <laughs> they didn't have computers when I was a kid, you know, right. I just, I mean, my first computer was from Radio Shack. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people might take this wrong, but it didn't go well. So I shot it. I didn't like it. It made me because it was in DOS. You off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in DOS, and DOS pissed everybody off. Mm -hmm. So I took it to the range and I shot it. Sure. So that that's we just had our we had it out right there and that was done. And you so, won. So, <laughs> I won. Well, you know, I, I was in college when the World Wide Web started. I remember being in the computer lab where it was all black screen with green letters, and they said, "Do you know about the web?" And I was like, "What?" And they said, type in something that you like. All right, MacGyver. And then they go, Boop. okay, now look, here's all these long lines. If you copy and paste, I don't know what that is. You know, and, and uh, basically it was all green letters, but that was the internet for a long, long time. Sure. You know, we didn't. There I, was remember, no I remember people telling me about it because mm -hmm. I don't remember doing it because I didn't do it. Right, right. So, and, I, and as an actor, you don't necessarily have to. You know what I mean? Give me what I have to study, allow me to study it, then I'm going to put that away and I'm going to get it in my head and then I want to forget that part of it and yeah. then become it and let it happen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It got like, wait, now I have to do all the technical work? And, and again, it's so funny because, all right, so I've worked with actors, you know, but to actually do this kind of a thing where you have to communicate through the internet, whole different world, and I realize that there are an actor's life is very specific and it is not computers per se. No, you know, with some, with some, I, I will say this because I've watched them. A lot of the um, young, younger actors. And I could damn sure say that a yeah. lot of the younger actors that I work with, you know, they're beautiful kids and they are kids. Mm -hmm. You know, they think of themselves as being, all grown up and it's kind of like you know you're still a tricycle motor yeah you're like you're precious that's great <laughs> you know and I, and I smile and i say you're nice you know you're good <laughs> yeah but they can work a phone faster than anything i have ever seen in my life sure i mean can i text yes i can i text like this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. make no bones about it yes i'll text you back but don't expect it to be at light speed well i so avoided I, I remember i avoided one number one i avoided cell phones for as long as i possibly could then when i got one it was a flip phone so it was remember the whole there's a b and c so if you do that if you go a b c 
E, uh, you know, it wasn't as quick. You had to actually go through three letters before you did it. Yep. Oh, now you're right. Now you just, they make them so that way you can just do this kind of a thing. If if this worked that way, mm -hmm. which it doesn't right. anymore, I beat it up too bad. So it's, if this one works fine. This one is just kind of slow. Yeah. Um, a bunch of questions that popped sure, in. Sure, lay it on me. It, but it's all I am, I am yours until you <laughs> hit me it, off of it. You know? It's all connected uh, uh, from what we were talking about. First, uh, we'll get back to the MacGyver and Stargate stuff, but what martial art is your preference? I started at a very, very, very young age uh, in another country. Uh, in the base style of Taekwondo. Okay, me too. Me too. That was in that was in Korea, and then at Shorinru, Kuksu Hapkido, okay. and Judo, mm. and Judo. Okay. So I, I I wish, and I really I say this now. I wish Jiu-Jitsu was part of it in my younger days. I really do, mm. but it wasn't. You know, it was Judo, and I and I enjoy it. You know, I like to, you know play Judo, but that was you know parent style and. Those are the styles I've worked with most of my life. Mm -hmm. uh, I've worked with Japanese uh, technicians, and they're very good, very direct. Mm -hmm. You know, they're very direct. And but I, I picked, I picked up from all of them. Sure, you know, I picked up from all of them. You know, obviously Chuck has made variations on certain moves with me and said, "Try this," and I try it. It works. You know, it mm -hmm. works better. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so I've I've always tried to stay involved. You get to a point. Do I train like I used to? No, I don't. Because you don't need to. Well, you no. know, and it hurts. You know, a lot well, there's more that. that. Yeah, <laughs> but it hurts a lot more than it used to. But uh, and I and I'm not trying to sound like a wimp, but it's just no, well, it's it, it does. You know, and but I love it. It's passionate. I will get with sometimes I will get with people uh, practitioners. And we'll work technique. We're look, working for a specific technique, an approach, you know, an attack, you know, a remove or something. And I'll work with them for a while, you know, and I enjoy it. You know, it's, it's usually the people I work with are not the ones that teach the class so much because the technicians that I work with are used to contact. So they're, you're going to get hit. So understand, we're learning this. You're going to get hit. You're going to hit back. But you have to understand what that technique does. Sure. So it's it's very specific. Mm -hmm. So um, I enjoy it. I will. I I feel that it's probably one of the greatest things in my life to have, to be connected with for mm -hmm. so long. Uh, one, the people I have met. The techniques that I have learned, the uh, senseis that I trained under, mm -hmm. the matches that I've fought uh, over the years, uh, all of that comes into working again as, as an actor. As you well know, that has followed me all the way through my career. Sure. I have used it in so many times in so many shows, but uh, they don't double me. Right. You know, because they said, because you're here and you do it, we can get the camera in on it as opposed to, Makes a difference. you know, shooting, shooting wide. Mm -hmm. We can get in and get more of the reaction, the angst, uh, whatever you're trying to convey, the pain, whatever. We can convey that because you do this. Mm -hmm. You know, just like with Patrick, you know, uh, we beat the crap out of each other for a movie. You know, we went to a fight and a movie broke out, you know, yeah. so it, and it shows too, you know, it's funny too, because I could tell that you were trained because even just you squaring up, I'm like, oh, there, he knows what he's doing. Somebody didn't tell him how to stand in a fighting position. He's done this. Mm -hmm. and he's comfortable with, you know, because there's the settling. You got to settle down and, you know. Yeah, you always see me do this and I I come up here and I just kind of like, come on, let's go. Right, like, come on, let's go. <laughs> I keep my hands, I keep my hands loose. And I wait for them to throw so we can parry it off and work it. Yeah, you you understand that. Though. Yep. You understand the parrying. But I'm a uh, I'm an American Kempo guy. Oh, Kempo uh, Parker's Parker. Yeah, Parker, that's right. Yeah, 
I started with Tang Soo Do when I was a kid. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I'm in Pennsylvania, which is a lot of Korean karate. Of so course. It's, it's the change. There's, of a lot, there's a lot of Koreans up there, too. Sure. And, you know, franchises and blah, 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 blah. So every, almost every other block is a karate school. Sure. But then, I, you know, as I'm learning it, I'm, I'm like, wait a minute, I'm chamber punching. What about this section here? And I remember the, te- the teacher going, you don't get to ask that question. You're not a black belt. I'm like, well, then I'm never going to be because I don't believe in what you're showing me. And then when I, when Kempo came along to our area, I'd already done some research. That's that's a lot of this. It's, well, it's, it's you know, oh, no. like I hit the, <laughs> I hit the guy. I'll tell you, it's funny, too, because I've counted it. And you go, blah, blah, and I just hit the guy five to ten times in that amount of time. Yeah. And I tried to do, um, they were doing competitions. And it's great if you're doing Korean karate because, again, tag, got him. Okay, point. Well, with Kempo, the guy throws a kick, and I, and I parry it, and I go, blah, 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 and I hit him, and the guy went, oh, and he fell to the ground. And as you know, you you get fluid in it where you don't think of what you're doing. You just do it. And then afterwards you go, oh, I took five swords and I did this and I did that. The guy goes, point to the guy on the ground. And I went, you were you overly aggressive. You were overly aggressive and you didn't find the match. Well, no, you, no, it wasn't what it was. He didn't what see he what I did. He goes, no, I just saw his leg go up. It kind of touched your shoulder. I said, yeah, as I blocked him. And then finished. Did you see the guy fall on the ground? And from that point on, I went, okay. So I'm not going to do competitions because I'm just going to argue with people who didn't see the pop up. You know. Well, that's why I didn't do those competitions. I was a kickboxer. Sure. I went straight into contact sports. I'm going to knock the hell out of you. You're going to knock the hell out of me. And we're going to see who walks away. Well, that it was funny. That's when my... my um, Sifu, that's what they mm-hmm. call it in that style. Uh, he said, you know, <clears throat> here's why you don't do competitions. Kempo is not for MMA or competition where you're going to get a point. This is if you're on the street, street and trying to kill you or multiple people are trying to kill you and you yeah. have to end it quick and accurately. Like, you know, I, the Chinese styles are very wide and very pretty. But it's not necessary. I mean, it's beautiful, but Kempo's tighter. Kempo is off boxing, you know, mentality where you keep it tight. You only you only have you only work where you need to work. Yeah, but you keep in, in, in Kempo though. You it's you your hands are here, but they're not tight. Your exactly because you're grappling always, too. Always, you see me when I put my hands up. I don't ever make a fist. Mm-hmm. I never make a fist because first I only make a fist right before I hit them. But right. most of the time I want to block. Right. I want to slap it down and hit him. And the grappling is is just as important. Sure. You know, some guy throws a kick. Yeah, okay, I could block it, but I could also grab and move you. You know, and that's to have that ability, you're not locked in anything. And Ed Parker was doing what you were saying Chuck was doing was taking a little bit from this style and a little bit from this style to fill in those holes. Redirect. Yeah. Redirect. Go to the hole. Block it. And one of the one of the best things about that I learned from Kempo is I don't have to kick over my waist, like I'll, I don't have to do any spin kicks. You if you know you kick, but you don't have to go up here with your foot. You could, but it looks really good when you're stretched out like this. And right. Somebody says, "Wow, that is really bitching." Yeah, it's really hard and it's boring, and the guy's not nine feet tall. Right, right, yeah. and and you wouldn't try a spin kick. Or one of those type of kicks, unless you already had the guy on the ropes and you can afford to turn your back yeah. on them. You turn your back on a guy in a fight, you could lose right then and there, whether the guy knew martial arts or not. Yeah. You know? So, I, yeah. I watched, a, I, watched, I watched a boxing match last night, and the guy that was got beat was winning the entire fight. We're in the 10th round. This yes. guy's winning the entire fight. And all of a sudden, the guy he was fighting went low for his body and caught him in the ribs. Mm-hmm. And I dare say broke his ribs because sure. the guy stopped the other boxer. The referee didn't say stop. The boxer stopped, turned his back to the opponent. It was kind of like, ouch, this is going to hurt. And it did. <laughs> the guy kept on it and obviously put him down. And the other guy who had really not done much for nine rounds except block and occasionally punch, 
won the fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was over. It was that, that fast. It was one second, one hit, hit him in the ribs, busted his ribs, and the guy, rather than defend himself, turned his back to his opponent, and it's kind of like, oh, dude, no. It's over. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> it, that, and I don't, yeah. watch, I don't watch a lot of sports, but I will watch hockey and I'll watch boxing because they're, they're quick. And I you, love boxing. Right? Right. And and yeah. I love to watch boxing with, with other people because you all think, oh, this guy's gonna win. And like you said, all of a sudden, oh, he's not gonna win now. Oh, okay, yeah. never mind. That's exciting. I took my son uh to a local uh it was a bunch of you know, bunch of uh, fights. Mm -hmm. It went from like six to ten thirty at night. Oh and, great. Yeah, oh, it was great. Because if one fight isn't so great, don't worry, in two minutes you're gonna see the next one. You know, and you're you could see all different people and different styles, and it's a fun night. But man, it's it could be mentally exhausting because you're so into it. You know, you're like, oh, and then when it's over, you're like, oh, I need a nap. <laughs> yeah. Now I have to go home. Yeah, I want to. I want to sleep now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. <laughs> um. Okay. So. What's I know we get we keep getting away from that's okay. What you want to do? I this is your thing. I knew we were going to do that, which is why I'm like, take our time and just have fun. It's not like there's rules to any of this, you know. Not in my world. Right? <laughs> um, but for the listeners who want to hear MacGyver or Stargate stuff, let me ask you. Uh, so I assume you had to audition for the first time on MacGyver. Yes, I did. Second time you probably didn't because they knew you and they remembered you and they called you back. Oh, yeah. Hired me. Same thing with Stargate. Stargate that was going to be my next question because they knew because I know Rick. Like I told you um, when we were texting, Rick got Don Davis at for the role because he I didn't a, know that. Yeah, he was I being a stand-in. Did not know that. Yeah, I knew Don Davis, and I always thought that he was playing the character because he was always in the, the same. He was in a suit or he's in a unit, whatever. And then I, I heard that, and then Lindy was reading said. Did you know that? I said, hell no, I didn't know that. <laughs> I always assumed this. Yeah. But you say Ricky Dean is the one that said. Rick would grab as much as many people as he got from MacGyver because, as you know, with your priorities being straight, you want to work with the people that you like. And if you trust. know somebody's a good actor and you can trust them to do their part, you go, well, just call them. Like, that's why people got recurring roles on MacGyver yeah. and, you know, just bring them back if we can. And so when they were trying to give him a boss, you know, he goes, well, I know a guy because by then Don uh, or not Don, uh, Dana had passed away, I believe. Yeah. And he said, well, if you're looking for a guy who is like my old boss, I know a guy who was his stand in and stunt double. And, you know, you, you'd you like him. So they bring Don Davis in. And Don Davis was another guy who I miss, who I got to talk to many, many times. Uh, he a nice guy. Such a nice guy. guy. But yeah. he told me what you told me. He used to, like, I'd see him at conventions. And as soon as he'd see me, he'd walk over. Instead of me, like, approaching the guy from the show. It's nice. Hey, to come come. Here. Yeah. Like, because they know I'm, I'm safe. I'm not, you know, goofy. So <laughs> he would see me come over to me. And he told me a story about, he goes, you know, I used to have anger issues. I used to. You're talking about Don. Yeah, Don. Yeah. He, I used to have a lot of anger issues. And it's it's not the good way to live your life. So I, I kind of, you know, by the time you get Stargate, everything's slow with the Texas draw. And, you know, everything's all right. Don't you worry. And, and they would laugh at him because they're trying to do their scene. And he'd be like whatever yeah <laughs> you know but just sit down just sit down take it'll happen yeah get it done it's not a problem you know yeah. but, but he would tell Rick, me those yeah. stories and and just love him just we talk about music um as a matter of fact funny thing he had to do his i don't know if you've ever done conventions have you ever done them i've done a few i've not you know people ask me have you i've done i think five conventions in my life i'm not a, i've done them and the people were very nice don't get me wrong yeah yeah, yeah. but i'm just it's You're just sure. too much sure people. no no i get it yeah because oh yeah because when you're on for eight hours a day you're on somebody's yeah. approaching your table you got to give it i know i know i always i always said that to my wife i said look at the person we just met they were so wonderful and kind 
which is great, and, and we love them for it. But imagine being in their position where now, oh, next person. Okay, I'm still on. You never get a moment to just mellow out, you know. And if you do, you might you don't want to come off like you're not enjoying yourself. You know, mentally, yeah. you have to have your ups and downs. Well, well also, you know, you know, I'm, uh, just like Don and everybody else, I tried to treat everybody that came up, you know, and I, I've been in some pretty big ones. Yeah. And, but I want to treat teach everybody that comes up is this, they're very special. Mm -hmm. You know, I, hi, how are you? Who? What's your name? Where do you come from? Mm -hmm. Is this your dad? Is this your dad? Is this your daughter? You know, I want them to feel like they're the most special thing in the world. And you're right. It's very difficult. I guess, you know. Because you uh, are sincere, you but you have to constantly be sincere. But you also got to be able to get the next person up there and the next person and the next person and the next person, mm -hmm. uh, which is, <clears throat> I just have a tendency, I like to talk to them. And it's very difficult for me to kind of move them along. So you have to, sometimes you get a handler there that kind well, of gets right, Well, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Get the heck out of here. I know. I know what you mean. And you don't like to, you don't like to do that. I don't like to do that. So. Well, Rick, it's funny. It's a vicious circle. Rick would, Rick does conventions and he didn't for a while because the two things that he wanted that he demanded was, I want at least five minutes with each person. Don't rush me. Yeah. And, and two, I don't want you to pay me. I want you to give the money to a charity. Whoever. Yeah. But whoever was running the conventions at the time said, no. It's like, what do you mean? No. You know, you, you, you got me and all I want to do is it doesn't cost you anything. And they're like, no, we can't legally do that or whatever. Well, eventually somebody said, yes, we can. So now he's starting to do the conventions. Glad. Uh, I, you know, I, 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 we were not, I can't really say that Ricky and I were super close, but we were always enjoyed being around each other. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, he's got his own world. He, he lives in his world and, you know, and I live in mine, but I thoroughly enjoyed being around him when we were. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he just had a way about him. You know, when he had had enough of something, he would let you know he'd had enough of something. Mm -hmm. You know, when they were pushing the issue too much or trying, he didn't like being rushed. Hates mm -hmm. hates being rushed, as you have you uh, said, you know, because he said, I can't work rushed. Mm -hmm. I can work at my pace. Right. And that's, you know, that's where MacGyver got to. They worked at his pace mm -hmm. and it worked fine. Oh, no kidding. It I mean, worked just God. fine. The, the honest to God, they are the two perfect shows. And I don't say that because I love it. I say it because they set such a high bar where it's not yeah. needed. It doesn't, you know, neither show will ever be, oh, it's that show. It feels out of time. No, it's current. There's a current yeah. energy. And it's because they allow, in a, even camera work, if he's one of those guys who you want to watch, even if he's not saying the line, because his facial expressions or reactions pay off. You know, like you're saying, he doesn't want to be rushed because he's setting the pace and he's, he wants, you know. He wants to listen and he wants to hear. Yeah. He wants to hear what's being said. Yeah. And how it's being said. And then his reaction to everything is beautiful. And yeah. that's because they allow it. You're right. If, if you rush somebody, well, now you're not getting their best work. No. You're not. You know. Um, and, and it's the same thing. I, I agree with you, Rick. And I've watched him with other people. He's always wonderful when I've gotten to see him. Um, I'm trying to get him on this podcast, but he he you got to get a hold of him, and he doesn't have an agent. He kind of does his own thing. Yeah. Uh, and I watch him with other people at conventions and stuff. And he, no matter who it is, he's kind and wonderful, and puts his arm around them, and you know lets them talk and talks to them and gives them a hundred percent. And it's like you said, it's that sort of like, God bless you for keeping up that energy. I sure. guarantee you guys got to sleep soundly at night. Yeah. When you allow your body yeah. to just go, okay. Yeah. You go find something to eat and then you go up to your room and you go, Oh, that's exactly what I was looking for. Bam. Boom. And you're out. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Don, the story is going to tell you about Don Don, uh, during the one, it was a Stargate convention. He had he had something planned when he was on stage. Yeah. Well, they lost his luggage. He had books he was going to refer to. Well, they lost his luggage. So he said, 
told the story about how his luggage got lost and said, instead, my friend Mac over there and I were talking about music. So I thought we would all talk about our favorite kind of music. And let me give you some lines that I love. And, I, and my wife and I are like, so this happened because of us? He kind of gives me like one of these, you know, like, thanks for giving me the idea. And I'm like, hey, you know, I'll I take I Somebody gives, you know, they give, sometimes people give things in the, the most subtle manner, you know, but there's an old saying, if you're going to steal, steal from the best. I think that you was know, one of his lines. Somebody, you know, steal from the best. And, and, and if you admire what somebody does, you know, I, I, I'm i always on the set. You know, I'll give you an example. I'm always on the set. Whether it's my day or it's not my day, if I mean, if I can go on the set, I'd rather be with the family than sitting back in some room mm -hmm. in a hotel. I don't want to do that. I'd rather be on the set. Sure. And that way I can watch the people I'm working with. And I get a chance to see what they do. You'd be surprised that sometimes people come up with, they have some little nuance that they do. And you watch it and you go, that was interesting. That little thing was interesting and you hold on to it and somewhere down the line there'll be a moment and it'll come back up and you'll use that nuance yeah and, and you look back and say thank you yeah thank you yeah. for the nuance and you know don would tell you in a minute he did it all the time he watched people all the time mm -hmm. same thing with ricky d mm -hmm. ricky dean watched people all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of subtleties to things he would do. Uh, we had talked about one of the scenes from Stargate between him and Carter. And it's not focused on, it's not even in the script. But his hand, when she's in like a hospital bed or whatever, his hand kind of starts to naturally, and I think this is a lot of Rick, reach for her to touch hands. Mm -hmm. But because they're military, you don't get to show that you have a favoritism over, you know, because you, you could put your hand here. Right. But you can't do this. You can't do this. And he started to do it. And then you see him kind of like pull back. But if you've watched the episode a trillion times like I have, you go, look, look at like that. You know what I mean? And he has said to me, he goes, yeah, that that was just we we kind of have an understanding, Amanda and I. Yeah. You know, they they, they do love each other, but they weren't allowed to show it and to watch yeah. that constant subtlety. You know, well, you know, it's funny. Amanda called me when they were doing, I think, one of the first Stargates there was. I was up there shooting a, a show with um, Petty Duke. Oh, and I, was, I was doing a show called, I think it was uh, No Child of Mine, I think it was, but I was up there doing a show. And a friend of mine was doing the show with Amanda. His name was Jay Akavone. Oh, I know. Yeah, I know Jay. Jay. Jay, Jay, we've spent a lot of time together. Jay's a very dear friend of mine. Yeah. And they were looking at the military. And I mean, I think Amanda said something to him. He said, this doesn't look right to me. And, and he says, you know, I got a buddy who's up here right now. If you let me call him and get it up, we'll straighten this out. And she said, you, he can fix this? He said, oh, hell yes. So he called me on the phone. He said, would you come over to the set? Amanda wants to come have you uh, help these guys look like military. So I said, sure, I'll come over there. So I went over and worked with her, and I worked with her, too, because she had – nobody had taught her. They didn't have a guy that would te teach her, you know, proper weapons weapons, weapons work, sure. holding it, that kind of stuff. The other guys were doing this. Finger was in the trigger well. They were doing everything wrong. And I went over there and spent about uh, two hours with them and with Amanda and Jay. Uh, Jay, but Jay had knew me because Jay had been around me, so he knew what I was doing. Yeah. And, uh, and I said, is there anything else I can help you with? They said, no, you, thanks. <laughs> you know. And Jay came over to me, gave me a hug. He said, thank you, man. You just, you, I said, man, I, you're my friend. That's what it's about. Said, She's a lovely person. I just met Amanda. That was when I met Amanda the first time. Huh. And such a lovely lady. She talked about it in interviews she did about me coming up there and teaching people how to be military said if we could hire him full time we would but you can't because he's an actor and that's what he does but he just he left he had a day off so he came over and trained our people and she's but, she's hilarious oh she's a hoot right she is a hoot yeah 
Yeah, she. Uh, it's funny too because you see her on Stargate and you go, okay, yeah, I like you know Carter is great, and then you see her in interviews and you go, oh wow, I love her. She's full of energy and oh and, yeah, she's um, all over the place and she's and quick witted. You know, she's so yeah. funny. So yeah, I and Jay Jay I met at a convention a couple times and he was one of the. It was great. The convention, the first day was over. He came in for the second day, but it was late at night. We're sitting out in the lobby shooting the bull. He tries to go to the bar, which is where everybody was, and it was closed. So I flag him down. We spent four to five hours to like five in the morning shooting the bull on a couch. You know, I've done that with him many times. And he's got the, he always says he's, he has on the side the construction business. Mm -hmm. And his motto, I don't think I, uh, I, I should look it up, but he always tells me the motto is, it may look like crap, but we get it done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's sturdy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sturdy. Sturdy crap. Um, yeah, he's so, a character. Yeah, I, he's another one who uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to flag him down, uh, who said, yeah, we're all for it. But again, you gotta, you gotta snag him. Him and uh, Anthony DeLongis, who I know you know. Oh, very well. Very right? well. Another, well another. You could, if you could get him out of the back country with his whips and his horses, you could get him to talk to you. Isn't that funny that you said that? Because he's like, yeah, no, I'm available. I'm actually uh, sword fighting this Thursday. But, you know, after that, I'm like, that does not surprise me. No, that's 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 him. You, he, he's either got a sword in his hand or a bull whip or he's on his horses or he's doing whatever. But that's that's Anthony. Yeah. And he's <laughs> Well, Anthony's a great guy. And to see you two in the movie side by side, I was like, oh, that feels right. That that I, I'd like to see a, a buddy movie with that. That you two together would be a lot of fun. It would be a, right? What be a, um what uh kind of music do you like? Because you're a music. Well, I mean, there's always you know, there's a certain country country music. I mean, I'm a more modern country enthusiast. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when it comes to rock and roll, I mean, I love rock and roll, man. I mean, I'm an ACDC fanatic. Oh, okay. I, I don't mind admitting that. You know, I, I love good, good rock and roll okay. and good country. I love the classics. Mm -hmm. I love Irish music. Sure. I love Irish. As a matter of fact, St. Patty's Day was yesterday, and my wife and I went down to a, an Irish bar and spent the afternoon with people we had never met, and it was lovely. We had a good time. And they played mu Irish music all day long, and it was great. Yeah. Everybody's stomping their feet and clapping their hands and all that other stuff. So, do you uh, do you play guitar? No. Not with these hands. No, that's <laughs> well. I read that you wrote music. I do write music. Do I you? I did an album. I did an album. I did an album and uh, put it together. I had Emmy Lou Harris came in and sang with me. Oh, for love uh, God! Tim Schmidt from the Eagles and Henry Paul from the Outlaws. Wow. Came in. Henry Gross, my dear, dear friend, Henry Gross, came in and uh, played on it. Uh, we had a bunch of people, yeah. I wrote the entire uh, album, sang it, and had those people in to sing with me. What's the name of the album? Don't know. Never named it. But you put it out, right? No? Nope. nope. Did you put the singles out? Nope. Why? Well, you have to have somebody that, you know, wants to do it. But I, I took it to a couple of people the big country singers and they looked at it and they, one of them said you know this song you wrote here is a number one hit and I said well you want to I could put you down as co-writer on it do you want to do it he said no I said I, I I didn't write it so I want to own it all so it's one of those things you know and I'm not a song I'm not a prolific songwriter for people but well they they like the songs for the most part you know I mean did you I wrote a song about Canada surprisingly enough <laughs> it's called BC Ferry Okay. I took a trip one time on the BC Ferry, and I wrote a song about that trip. So, so did, you, did you get the songs recorded, though? Yeah, they're recorded. I just never did anything with them. Tried to, but I couldn't get anybody behind them, but that's if, okay. Well, if you're interested, I mean, in today's world, you can... I know you're not a big um, <laughs> computer guy, but there are people who can actually put it out on the internet. If you want, no, I, and I know that. Oh, okay, good, good, good. Just I didn't want you to feel like nobody's ever going to hear it. Well, no, there's ways. No, if, if no you, I mean, there, there's ways we know that, but no, I, I guess much to my, whatever you know, my wife says you need to get out there more. I'm a very private person. Sure. And I, I, 
I love talking to people. I like being out there with people. But I'm a very private person. As you should be. You know, and, and I like it that way, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, somebody asked me, I, I sang these songs to people. I just sang it to them. They said, why don't you record? I said, we'll pay for it if you'll put them together and sing them. So I did. I sang them all. And then I got Emmy Lou to come in, sing a song with me about veterans and bring them back home and being part of the healing. I wrote that song. She sang with me on that. It's a beautiful song. It is called Part of the Healing. Hmm. And, um, but no, I did that. And right now I am writing a book. Right now I, I'm, I'm kind of a sci-fi. You obviously know I'm kind of a sci-fi person. Sure. I've written, I co-wrote co a, a movie we're trying to get done with uh, Chuck, surprisingly enough. And it's called Tactical Badger. Hmm. And uh, I'm writing another one about, uh, well, I'm going to keep it kind of, but it's, it's a scary son of a gun, but it's about the Navajo. Okay. But, but that, and, uh, you know, like I said, I'm staying busy. I've got a, a, a movie I'm going to do here in a month or so called Dead Slate. Uh -huh. it's, it's a horror film. And I, this is my first horror film huh. in all the years, in all the years, I have never done a horror film. And I thought that was just wrong. Sure. And finally, a friend of mine that um, I helped on, he was doing another horror film. And uh, I came in and he, and again, I was sitting up there talking to him, you know, he's just a wonderful person. But I looked, I said, have you got a technical direct, a technical advisor? He said, well, we have a stunt coordinator. I said, do you have a technical advisor? says well no i said stunt. i said i know the stunt coordinator he's a great guy he's a friend of mine i said you guys look like crap i said if you want me to i'll go in and fix that and, you know um uh, i wish i could I, I you know, sometimes i just get brain dead so i yeah. went in and trained him i went in and trained him i went in to, to do an entry for a, the closing part of the movie i did, taught him how to do the entry and make it look good michael madsen was in it and he said thanks man i look good now <laughs> But, I, you know, and I went back and I didn't think another thing about it, you know, and, and he just, he never forgot it. And he just said, you know, I, he just said, you know, one of these days I'll do another movie and you, you put, I, and I, what, I, what do we, what do you say? Oh, that would be great. Right. Well, he's doing it. And he said, you know, you're going to be playing this character. And I said, cool. Great. And it's a, it's a horror film. And I said, even better. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love that you you segued into what's coming. That was going to be my next thing. So, what's the next thing you're up to? And you answered that. Well, you know, we're just trying. What we all do, you know, is continually try to stay in the game, mm -hmm. do what is passionate within each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. You know, our craft, our our art form. You know, and and putting it out there for people to see, and hopefully they like it. Mm -hmm. And the the book, I will put it in book form. I will publish the darn thing, and then I'm going to put it in a script form, and I'm going to make a, a scary movie out of it. Yeah. Well, I, I'll tell you, uh, just the greedy side of me is very thankful that you're continuing on. You know, when there's somebody that you like, you know, there, there's, there's the party that goes, where I've come to understand when people say, I just want happiness and health for people. I get that now. But right. the other half right. of me goes, the other half of me goes, more. I want more of what I like. Well, you know, I want I want happiness too, but I also don't want to sit on my ass and be bored to death. I want to get out there, kick ass, take names, and I don't want to bring a pencil. Right. That's just simply it. I want to work. I want to do something. I want to have fun at this craft. I want to if, if people hate my guts like they have a lot of shows, they said, you know, I hated your guts. Roadhouse, they hated you. I hated you. Thank you. Thank you. That was my job. You said anything nicer to me. You hated me. <laughs> Great. Terrific. But, you know, if you get those kind of comments, that's what I worked for. You, I did my job. You enjoyed it. Yeah. I feel good about it. Thank you. You know, you've told me things that I very much appreciate it you because it awesome. says, it says to me that you're doing something right. Mm hmm you're doing something that brings joy and and entertainment to people. And you're leaving your mark on the world too. Well, you know, if that's what if that's what it's supposed to mean, great. Yeah. You know, I don't really look at it look at it that way. You know, there's I guess there's some people, this is my legacy. Great. You know, at the end of the day, whatever you've done, the person that you are 
is your legacy. Yeah. You know, yeah, you can say he did this and this, but he was a big asshole. Right. It's not much of a legacy. That's exactly what I remember in the beginning of our conversation. Yeah. That's exactly what I said. You know, I want people to go say, yeah, you know what? And he was a good guy. I liked him. He was a hard-headed son of a buck, but he was a good guy. At the end of the day, when you have gone to the last, ladies and gentlemen, that is a wrap that will ever be in your life. Yeah. And you can walk away having said that, that you, you, you're doing entertainment. You're making people smile, laugh, and ask questions and gain knowledge. And hopefully I'm doing the same thing somewhere along the line. And, you know, I, it's, I, it's not that I'm looking for a list of things. Yes, he's a, a songwriter. He's an author. He's written a book. He's done this. He's a director. I'm just the person I am doing the things that I want to do. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day. Well, I, yeah. They can I, put it in whatever category they want to put it. In. I don't care. Right. And and I, I've it bestowed this on my children, too. I said, you know, for me, I'm desperately trying to make a difference in the world. I, I'm not saying I'm going to move rivers, but if I can contribute something positive that when I'm gone, there's something that, that people go, no, the world was a little better because he was in it. You touch it one person at a time. Yeah. Now, I always tell people, say, all right, if you were to sit there and say, what have you done right in your life? Well, I could personally say I've done a lot of wrong. Sure. I've made a lot of mistakes, but I married the lady that is my best friend in the world, yeah. and I love her to pieces, and that's one thing I did right. Right. That's one thing it'll be, will go with me. People say, yeah, I did it right. So that's one thing, one person at a time. And that's how you go about this. You go about it one person at a time, one child at a time. Mm -hmm. If you reach them, they might say, well, I don't agree with you. I say, well, that's your privilege. That's right. Cool. I'm glad. Exactly. Let's have a conversation about it. But if you don't want to, I got it. No problem. Right. <laughs> yeah. But at the end of the day, that's what I want to go away with. And if that's, that's what they call a legacy, then that's what it'll be. And, and you're absolutely right, because I was thinking about when we were talking about, say, Peter Falk. Peter Falk, you know, has done a lot. He's Columbo and all this great stuff. But it, the end to every conversation about people who we know that pass away is, were they a good person? Yeah. Were they a good person? Were they a good person? Because that's right. I mean, think about that. If I say Peter Falk, you go, oh, what a great guy. And there it is. That's, that's, the, that's the start. That's the start of the legacy. Yeah. That's the start of the way. He was a great guy. You know, and 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 about, about everybody we've talked about today, and we've talked about a lot of people. Yeah. Are great guys. Wonder and, and, and great ladies. I've known a lot of great ladies in my life. I've worked with them. They're wonderful. I married the greatest lady I know. Mm -hmm. and, and and you know what? I'll tell you, and I know from experience too. That is such a blessing because everybody goes, ah, oh, you know, you marry somebody. No, 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 no. Oh. It is not easy to find the right person. I mean, you know, I, I'm explaining to my my kids, my son's 14, my daughter's 11, and I'll tell them, you know, before you find someone to even date, I'm not even talking about marriage. Before you do anything, you have to make sure that you're the good person who's good enough to go out into the world and subject yourself to whoever. And then through that funneling system, hopefully you'll find the right people to bring That's into true. your life. And if you're really blessed, you're going to find the woman or in my daughter's case, the guy who you're going to end up with. And then it doesn't end there because you can, you two can get along great as a husband and wife. What if you're not good parents or one of you is a decent parent, but the other one isn't, you know, it's a constant, uh, it's it's work in motion that you have to always make sure never, that you, it never it never stops and you and you're never, and you're not gonna oh, you're gonna get it wrong right a lot exactly. of times my my wife has said right up front you know she'll tell you in a heartbeat I wasn't gonna marry an actor I wasn't gonna marry a military person and I wasn't gonna marry a cop However, she got all three and she finally relinquished to the fact okay. Yeah. Do we get, do it? Is everything always a rose garden? Hell no. No. 
But there's that comfort in knowing that you're safe. The safety of your relationship. Like if my wife and I argue, I just laugh. I'll laugh in the middle of it. And she'll go, why are you laughing? I said, because I'm blessed that I have you to have this argument with. Like it's, you know. I got to I gotta learn that. I'm going to steal that. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to try to steal that and make it work for me. And she'll, she'll go, I'm trying to be mad at you. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. But, you know, I realized that there was a time when you weren't with me. And now you are. So even though we're bickering, I'll take it. Yeah. You know, I mean, then, my wife and I are, are your, is your, my wife and I are both A personalities. Yeah. I mean, there is no A and C or A. No, we're right. both A personalities and both both very strong. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Right. Well, right. And I dated girls who were nice girls. They liked me and I liked them, but it wasn't an equal balance. Like it was always me kind of wanting to take care of them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, they're great. Oh, but yeah. They need to be directed. They don't quite know what to do with their life. When I met my wife, I went, I admire her as a human being. Like, it's like, wow, I want to be more like her. Ooh, I've never had that before with anybody I dated. Yeah. I Okay, so she's the one. Okay, she's the one. Got it. And if she feels the same about me, dynamite. You're in, dude. Right? <laughs> You're in. And then our, our children are, God bless them, the the result of that because they i teach them to be leaders not followers you know know your place but know also your potential and what you can do sure. and they both coincidentally you'll appreciate this got into acting at school now they just cool. had a competition against other schools and they won both two different skits but they won and my son is so natural that he had strangers do what happened with you, where the person comes up and goes, that was pretty incredible. That was, you did an excellent job. Outstanding. He's like, oh, wow, all right. I said, keep that. Remember that. Yeah. You know, there, and you know with acting, you could either overact or underact. He found that nice balance. He found the telling the truth. And that's what you do. The truth is, you know, and I, and I say this to people all the time. What is acting? You know, uh, I think Spencer Tracy said, he said, put your feet on the ground, look the person in the eye and tell him the truth. I don't care what the role is. Be honest. If you're the biggest butt in the world, be the biggest, honestly, the biggest butt in the world, but be it honestly. Mm -hmm. You don't mm -hmm. have to push. You know, uh, being a bad guy, everybody thinks you got to yell and scream. I don't yell and scream. Mm -mm, you don't. You really I don't. Look at, I look at you. Yeah. There's an intensity at, to your look. Yeah, I've had a lot of people say, said, you've got a very, very intense look. He said, you don't really do anything. Mm -hmm. He said, you just start with looking at them. Mm -hmm. And then you go from there. And I, I've never, I mean, yes, you raise the voice every once in a while. But most of the time, I don't raise my voice. Mm -hmm. I'd it's rather get confidence. In, the confidence yeah, comes through. Yeah, I'd rather get in very close and let them know that I'm telling them the truth. <laughs> That this is going to be your worst day. Yeah. Even so, even on on the the matter of time episode of Stargate, your your character is somewhat asking you know well not even somewhat asking for forgiveness of Jack, who's who's ticked. I mean, you left me to die, kind of stuff, and you hold your ground, but it's not like you said. It's I'm sure of who I am. I'm sure of what I'm saying. I don't need to yell right now. That's right. And it comes through like it besides it being a great episode of Stargate, you know, with the with the black hole and everything, the inner the conversation between the two of you plays so well. It's the highlight that I think is even better than the black hole part of it. You know? And that's yeah. it was interesting how it worked in when we did that. Ricky, I remember he said, I'm not going to be your friend. He said, I'm not, I looked at him, I said, I'm not asking you to. I mean, that's how he started with, he was talking about characters. And he said, I'm not going to be your friend. I said, I'm not asking you to. Mm -hmm. I said, say what's on your mind. Get it off your chest. You know, but just don't be afraid. I said, get to it. And he said, trust me, I'm going to get to it. <laughs> and, and he did. And I love the fact that there's no kumbaya moment by the end of the episode like your character goes into the black hole without the 
I forgive you. That's right. It's no, I thought I was doing the right thing. I'm sorry this happened to you. However, I thought I was doing Clear. the right thing. And, yeah. Clear. And then by like, wow. I thought that always stayed with me too, because typically you want to give them a, okay, they're okay with each other. Like he's no, I'm sorry you're dead, but I'm still ticked at you. Bye. Yeah. You know, that's, 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 what it, that's what it had to be. That's amazing. I'm that's what it had to be. I'm telling you, great shows. Yeah. Great, great. I've been, I've been lucky. I've been yeah. very lucky, very blessed. No, I really mean that. I've been very lucky and very blessed. You know, I always tell people, you know, no, I'm not an A-class actor. I am a character actor. Mm -hmm. And I'm a damn good character actor. Mm -hmm. I'm not the best, obviously, but, or I, but I think I'm pretty damn good at it. You're still working. I'm still working. You know, there's a lot of those people that are. Right. But I'm still working. I'm still working at it. And I'm still improving every time. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because it's important. Right. Right. The next role and what you do with it is important. Mm -hmm. It's and, not. And I'll say. You said something earlier I thought was very appropriate. You said some of the roles I've done have been bigger than others and some of them not so big. And I get that. But you try, try to make you remember it. Whatever the role is, you're going to remember it. Exactly. And then there's what, what's the great saying? There are no small roles. There's only small actors. Mm -hmm. So when I get a role, I'm tickled to death. I'm working. I'm doing my craft. I'm very happy. Thank you. Yeah. Now let's get after it. Yeah. yeah. Let's and dance. I, I always say that before when they roll camera, people walk around and say, is everybody ready? I said, let's dance. <laughs> that, I say it every time I get on the set. I think you Are said you that during the intro, too. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a good uh, mantra. I do it every time. Well, the second they asked me if I'm ready, I said, let's dance. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I, I know you already know this, but I'm thrilled that we got to talk. Me too. Man. Uh, right? For real. Yeah. I mean, I, I hope some t time I actually see you uh, out in the world. That would be nice. to. I would dig that. Yeah. I take, really dig it. I'll take yeah, it. Do me a favor. Just give my, my best to your wife and your kids, you know, because... The time. Tell them thank you for the time that I got to steal you away. <laughs> and we got to have this. Same to your wife. And, Pass it on. And uh, down the road, if you want to do this again, we could talk about a new project, whatever you're working on, and just catch up and shoot the bull. Mac, it'd be a pleasure. Thank you, buddy. It'd be a pleasure. I will talk to you later. God bless you. <laughs> you too. <laughs> Bye. Bye. -bye. The MacGyver Podcast is part of the Forever Adventure Network and made possible by donations to the Forever Adventure Network by Mac Jackson on Patreon. Please subscribe, rate, and review wherever podcasts are heard. And follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And remember, stay creative, everyone. The Forever Adventure Network. Welcome to the adventure. Hi, everybody. If you're looking for the best in podcasts, audio series, and music, please check out the Forever Adventure Network. We have podcasts such as the Never Gets Old podcast. We have audio series such as the MacGyver SG-1 audio series and music by Harmony Constant, as well as blogs, comics, and more. Please check us out at the Forever Adventure Network. And as always, thanks for joining the adventure. The Forever Adventure Network. Welcome to the adventure.